All right, guys, we are back on Fog Entertainment with episode five. It is a review for Money Heist Korea Joint Economic Area. Now, speaking of the JEA, I do like the way they've implemented the whole north and south of Korea into the series. Now, I did not watch the original Spanish version, so I do not know what happened in that, but I'm really enjoying this Money Heist Korea, and in fact, I'm really enjoying. All the Korean shows that I watch at the moment. So yeah, let's have a bit of story time here. Truth be told, a few years ago, when I seen a lot of these Korean shows being uploaded to Netflix, I never really gave them a chance, you know, I thought, I don't really want to watch this. The first Asian show that I actually watched was Alice in Borderland, which of course is Japanese, it's not Korean. I watched that and you know what, I thought it was really good, I enjoyed it. I think I gave it an 8 out of 10. I think it started very very strong and then towards the end I didn't really like the second half but it, it led on good it ended well and it got you excited to see a second season with the fact that they need to capture all the cards and then there's the face cards so that was all good I think I watched an episode of Sweet Home which is South Korean and I didn't really get into it anymore until Squid Game came out Squid Game obviously was massive it blew up, everybody watched Squid Game but then I sort of gave other shows a chance and I, honestly every single show I've watched since Squid Game has been better than Squid Game, it really has been, I've watched um, All of Us Are Dead, it was great I've watched uh, My Name, fantastic I've watched Extracurricular quality, pure quality um, I'll, I'll probably watch more but at the moment we're currently watching Money Heist Korea here on Fog Entertainment now what I would say lets some of these shows down slightly is the fact news flash breaking news, I'm not actually Korean so I, I watch the dub version because I don't really like watching subtitles, I think it's a distraction when you're paying attention to subtitles you're not fully focusing on the visuals that are happening on the screen so I don't really like watching subtitles, so therefore I do the dub, and the dubbing in parts isn't great, and sometimes the emotions don't really link up, and that's, I, I guess it's not a, it's not, it's, I'm not being negative on the show, because it's not the show's fault, at the end of the day, it's a Korean show, and I'm not Korean, I'm watching a dubbed version, so that's, that's on me, but what I would say is, I think there is some South Korean shows I've watched that do dubbing better than the Money Heist Korea, but I think the worst show for dubbing, man, is Squid Game. 100%, especially the first few episodes, I think it gets better towards the end, but the dubbing in the, in the first episode, like, I mean, it's miles off, you see them talking and there's no, there's no English coming out, man, it, it's kind of insane, but I guess the whole point was, you know what, I'm enjoying this, I'm enjoying the K-dramas that I've watched before this, and I'm probably going to watch more, so if you want to see more South Korean dramas or any sort of shows on Fog Entertainment, then leave a like, comment, subscribe, and you will get them. But I'm going to start doing more stuff like tier lists, uh, ranking videos, ranking each episode of these series, um, doing overall season reviews, ranking all the characters in order, making videos maybe then and, then and now, showing the entire cast. I'm going to do lots of videos rather than just reviews. So if you like this kind of stuff, if you're interested in the entertainment side, if you want content, then you're in the right place, so stay tuned. But finally, story time is over, but we continue the story of the Money Heist career. So let's get in to episode 5 here. So we see Park Chu Wu, the secret agent who managed to sneak in at the end of episode 4. And he was part of the ambush team. Now of course the ambush team managed to regroup and escape. Once uh, they realised that the, the crew had changed their mask, they changed their costume, so they wouldn't be able to blend in. So the ambush team pulled back, but Park ji Su, Park ji Hu, who I think was like the leader of this team, he decides to stay in the building and he blends in and he befriends Anne, who then decides to pretend that he was like the, the bus driver of the school because he can't really blend in as a student. I believe he's only 33, but he kind of looks like 47 or 48 or fucking maybe 53. I don't know. He looks kind of old. So he, Anne can't really say that he's a school teacher or that, I mean, that he's a school student. So, and there's only one school teacher in the building. So she says that he was the bus driver. So he starts blending in with the hostages, but in fact, he is coming up with his own plan to try and take over the Mint, to try and bring this whole operation to an end. And thanks to the help from the director, he teams up with the director, and they also get help from Yoong Min, who's 
<laughs> kind of been sleeping with the director, but it looks like she has feelings for Denver, but she bet kind of betrays Denver here. She lures him in, and then Chu Wu and the directors just essentially start torturing Denver, and they interrogate Denver to get information. They want him to spill the beans on who the leader is, who the professor is, so that Park Ju Hu can essentially just kill him and if you cut the head off the snake then the rest of the body will just kind of you know <laughs> be limp and die so that is the game plan here meanwhile berlin is he's been like not held hostage but he's been kept he's been separated he's been restrained and uh, he's not trusted at the moment i guess after his outburst he, he's pointed a lot of guns at people so maybe you can understand the professor's like right for the moment berlin you're done. You, you're, you're not in charge anymore. You need a time out. So he's been held in a separate area. Rio's bringing him food and uh, he's like sweating. Rio asks him what's wrong. Berlin says that he is, he's dying essentially. He's got a terminal illness. Rio doesn't believe him. He thinks it's just a plan for him to escape. So he just leaves him with his food. And Berlin doesn't really want the food. So he just tosses the food on the floor. And uh, later when Rio goes to check on Berlin, Berlin manages to uh, get the upper hand. Because Rio like, takes his handcuffs off, unties them so he can like try and give him medical uh, medical like uh, treatment but Berlin manages to choke him out and escapes from being held captive uh, meanwhile with Denver still being tortured he kind of he, he doesn't really give anything up but Park Chu Wu and the, the director they come to the conclusion they can kind of narrow out they can kind of cross out who is not the professor and then it kind of brings it down to one person and they conclude that Tokyo is in fact the professor, therefore uh, Park Ju Wu has to go and try and lure Tokyo and try and kill Tokyo. So he manages to go and set off like an alarm. Uh, then the, the rest of the the crew try to like regroup. They try to gather the hostages in the one place. Tokyo is going to see if she can see what caused this alarm to go off. So she gets like isolated, and this gives a chance for um for Park Ju Hu to essentially assassinate and bring the whole thing down and uh, we'll, we'll mention that in a little minute how that plays out but on the outside we have Wu Jin beginning to open up to the professor more as uh, she's essentially fallen in love with the professor and the professor is beginning to feel guilty about his secret identity and the fact that he is just straight up lying to this woman and I think he's beginning to fall in love with her too so it's kind of getting harder for him to go along with this like secret identity when he has to for the mission but he is actually enjoying Wu Jin's company and I think he wants to be with Wu Jin so we do get more a lot more stuff with those two uh, then inside we have um we have a, uh, yeah, so with Tokyo, Tokyo gets, what's the big guy, is the big guy called Oslo, or is he called, oh, is it Oslo, I think it is, yeah, so the professor wants to know what's happened with the car, so essentially a car that they were using has been caught on the cameras and they've managed to identify the car, so they've like traced the car, they've got the, the license plate, the, the registration, and they want to try and get the, to the car, the, the officials to see if they can get like fingerprints, to see if they can see who the car belongs to, who it's registered to, so... The professor contacts the crew in, inside the men and he wants to know if Oslo did in fact get the car scrapped. Oslo said he took it to the scrapyard, but he just paid the money. He didn't actually witness it get crushed, get demolished, get destroyed. Tokyo then says that these people will do anything. They will fix up any old car and they will sell it on. Even if it's like a health hazard, even if it's not roadworthy, they will get that car going. They will get that car out in order to bring in money, in order to profit essentially even if they're putting people's life at risk so th this pretty much lets the professor know that unless oslo seen the car get crushed to his eyes the car is probably not crushed the car is probably still at the scrapyard so professor 
rushes to the scrapyard, he manages to get in the car after <laughs> getting into a bit of a scuffle with the people that work there. So one of them got like hot coffee thrown in their face, the professor manages to get into the car, he's trying to wipe down everything, he's like wearing a mask, he's like surgical <laughs> gloves on and like bleach and disinfectant and he's just trying to completely clean this car. But the police are on to him and the police get outside and Wu Jin is outside the, like the, it's like a shelter, no it's like a shelter, it's like a, like a mini garage that the car's been kept in and Wu Jin is literally outside so Wu Jin's about less than 10 feet for the professor here she pulls her gun but the professor then slams down on the accelerator he breaks out of the the garage that is containing the car and he drives off and then Wu Jin and the rest of the police get in their vehicles and they launch a police chase so is the professor going to be alright? I hope so, we know he's smart, we know he's the brains of the operation but we don't know if he's any good when it comes to driving, I don't, he's not the getaway driver so we'll find out if the professor is any good or not in this situation but then we go back inside the men and we see Tokyo She's looking for any more hostages. She is trying to solve where the, the, the alarm has been set off her. And she then turns around and she sees that Park Ju Wu has got her in his sights. He's got the sniper or the gun or whatever it is, some sort of rifle. He's aiming down the scope. He has got Tokyo right where he wants her. And he is about to end this. Well, he thinks he's going to end it because he thinks Tokyo's the professor. We all know that she's not, but if she does get shot, if she does get killed, then that would still be a big blow to the crew to lose one of their more important members. Park Chu Wu lines her up, the gunshot is held in the episode end. So there you go, man. Intrigued, you know, it's left us hanging here on the edge of a cliff. It's like a knife edge, man. We're, we're balancing. We don't know what's happening. Is Tokyo just being killed? Is the professor going to get caught here? Is the whole plan went to shit? Well, it might have went to shit, but to find out, we're going to need to watch episode six, and that review will be on the channel tomorrow. So, yeah, are you enjoying this series? Then keep liking these feds and we will bring them out to you but it's time for the rating and uh we came to a conclusion i know i'm only doing this solo but me and my brother have actually watched it together and he's he's gave his rating so that's what it is he gave it an eight um i'm gonna i'm gonna give it an eight as well i probably would have gave it a seven but why I'm going to give it an 8 is because I, I like the fact that the professor also had to get his hands dirty and we've seen him act on the outside. Now we have seen a lot of the professor but mainly it's only be like com through communication and basically gaining the trust of Wu Jin. He, yes he's been doing important stuff but it's basically he hasn't been getting his hands dirty you know he's just been doing like the... the the computer work, the, the brains, he's been the brains of the operation. And don't get me wrong, he still is the brains. But in this episode, he had to get his hands dirty. And it was good to see that. It was good to see him have to, have to spring into action in order to save the plan, to save the group, and to protect their identity. So yeah, I enjoyed this episode. I'm giving this an 8. He's giving it an 8. We're giving it an 8 out of 10. So let us know what you think down below in the comments. Give me your rating. And we will catch you for the part 1 finale tomorrow. Episode 6. I'll be here, so make sure you're here, and we'll see you later, but there, yeah, that's it, 8 out of 10 for episode 5 of the Money Heist Career Joint Economic Area, that is it guys, I've been Sir Scotland 90, this is Fog Entertainment, like, subscribe, comment down below, and we will see you tomorrow, but until next time, peace.